Thank you, Professor Yazami. I think I have to apologize that we don't let you doing more because we want to hear more from you, but we have a workshop on batteries and you are welcome to be there and uh, et cetera. So thank you so much. Uh, I just want to say one word when he's talking. I'm thinking about what's happened if we take all diaspora, we have amazing diaspora in outside Morocco, and we bring him here in Morocco, we give him the big institute, the most big institute, we give him everything to develop science. Uh, then, yes, <laughs> then, <laughs> then I just say I'm doing science fiction, maybe, because, uh, well, you know what, I'm, what I mean? So we will rather answer to the questions of the audience, so you are welcome to ask Professor Yazami. And I want to ask you one question before. My, my son always, while he he's charging his smartphone, he play. Is it a problem? It depends what kind of game. <laughs> Uh, actually, the thing is, uh, uh, this is a very good question because it um, brings me to make a comment about the difference between uh, nickel cadmium and uh, lithium ion batteries. Is this the so called memory effect? Lithium ion battery has no memory effect, absolutely no memory effect. It means that any state of charge, you can either recharge it or discharge it, no problem. Now, lithium, I mean, nickel cadmium, nickel metal hydride, if you leave it for a long time, uh, even if uh, the, 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 the gouge tell you you have 50%, you may not be able to use it. But um, I think battery, lithium ion batteries are very forgiving to many of this kind of abuse uh, you know, situation where you are charging and discharging at the same time. It's not a big problem, I would say. Thank you very much for this uh, very interesting talk. Uh, I was just uh, wondering what is the liquid batteries, if you can give us more in, uh, information about this kind of... All right, amazing. yeah, of course. <laughs> okay, so um, surprisingly, uh, organic chemists have been using uh, so-called um, lithium naphthalenyl, lithium diphenyl solutions, where they, these solutions are liquid and they behave as almost metallic lithium. So uh, for the redox you know, potential of these solutions, it's very close to half a volt or below half a volt. Very, very low. It's below everything we have, uh, I have shown you except metallic lithium and uh, lithium graphite. So you put metallic lithium in a liquid and that liquid digests lithium. It becomes a solution with very beautiful color, blue, green, yellow, depending on what you are using. And that solution, if you put an, ele an electrode in it and you measure the voltage, you have five, zero 0.5 volt or less versus metallic lithium. And it's reversible, it's quite a stable, etc. So I just for sake of you know, demonstrating the concept, we put cathode materials as our solutions, either in water, aqueous solutions or organic solutions, and we could measure up to 3.8 volt between liquid anode and the liquid cathode. And this is the world record for this kind of chemistry at ambient temperature. Um, please, please introduce yourself. Thank you very much for this interesting talk. I'm Abdurazek Abadli, a doctor engineer Agrize in electrical engineering from Tunisian electrical. Uh, okay. Talk about it. I'm always joking. Sorry. Uh, you know, uh, the French became very famous with la vache qui rit, the cheese. Okay, and this is the battery that thinks, la batterie qui pense. It's la vache qui rit, la, la batterie qui pense. But for for a battery to think, it has to have a brain. And to, until now, since Mr. Volta introduced the battery to Napoleon in, 19, uh, in 1800, batteries have no brain. We never allocate, I mean, give a chance to batteries to have a brain. Now I'm introducing a brain in a battery, inside each battery, and that brain has two roles. One is to collect the data 
you know, and process the data, number one. Number two, to communicate with us. So I'm kind of like a, I don't know, dreamer or something. I think batteries are talking to us somehow. Before anything happens, they complain. They said, well, something bad, etc." So we have to be proactive with batteries before anything happens. You probably heard in last year, January last year, Boeing had three consecutive fires in their Dreamliner airplane. And they s uh, grounded 50 Dreamliner airplanes worldwide. It cost them more than $300 million. Fortunately, nobody was injured, nobody was dead, but for the image of the, 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 the company Boeing, it was devastating. And until now, they don't know why these batteries caught fire, exactly. They don't know why. There are many hypotheses, but there is no real proof that these batteries caught fire for determined reason. So what we are doing now is, if a battery is not feeling good, we have to know it in advance. When you have, like, in solar energy, you have many megawatt, you know, produced, and you have to store them. You have to align batteries in series and parity. We'll use thousands, hundred thousand of cells, okay? So one of these cells, or few of them, will be deteriorating faster than the others, and they are prone to catch fire. And if that's happened, everything catch fire because it's a domino effect. So we have to recognize among 10,000 cells the one that's maybe at risk. And that's what's exactly what we call intelligent batteries. So we will take one more question, one. I think the near future is uh, starting next year. We are working on it. And uh, that's the other side effect of this draper price, is that, hey, suddenly people rec realize that, yeah, we have a phosphate in Morocco, we have cobalt, we have a lot of things that are used in batteries. So what do we need, actually, to start a mass production or industry? And we are working on it as we are speaking. I was uh, yesterday in Rabat, and that was exactly the topic I had to discuss with many <coughs> players in the government, in industry. And you may hear some good news in uh, 2015, inshallah. I want you to give us the last word about Boeing. Yes. Empire. Yes. If this problem is resolved now, or, or we have some risk, we take the, the plan. Okay. You know, um, I don't know if there is any Boeing gentleman here or representative of Boeing. The, the thing is that they, um, I was part of a panel who is not an official panel for Boeing, all right? Uh, just discussing among scientists and engineers on batteries online, you know, internet, and give some uh, suggestion. Because I don't care about money. What I care is when I take an airplane, I arrive to destination. There's no, no risk of uh, incident like this. All right, so it's a kind of uh, funny story because the reason why Dreamliner wanted to use lithium-ion batteries is to reduce the, the weight of the, the airplane. Until um, since the beginning of the um, uh, aeronautic industry, uh, number one battery in the uh, airplane was nickel cadmium. Nickel cadmium was the wonderful battery, working, no problem. We had never heard about nickel cadmium catching fire. And then the only problem with nickel cadmium is energy density, that is, I would say, the, the maybe 20% or 25% of lithium ion. So Boeing and others, Airbus also, decided actually to move to lithium ion. And uh, they wanted actually to optimize, you know, the, 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 the weight and the volume of the battery so as to gain. And by doing this, they uh, actually took some risks, all right? So to make a long story short, what they decided to do is they keep lithium ion batteries, number one, but they are not going to use this lithium ion battery between 100% and 0% ch state of charge. They will use only between 80 and 20. So they are going to use only 60% of the, the theoretical capacity of the battery, number one. And it's only when you charge and you discharge that the risk increases to deteriorate the battery. So they are on the plateau safe, number one. Number two, <coughs> They put these batteries in a stainless steel box container with a lot of you know, thickness and so on. And also they decided to have some vents to, if there is any fire, they will evacuate so as nobody will see the, the, the uh, black smoke coming out from the cockpit. All right, so these uh, two decisions, paradox, the paradox is that the battery box is heavier than nickel cadmium 
Dat zit niet om een beter. Thank you so much, Professor Yazami. It's wonderful to hear your talk. Thank you. Thank you, the Thank you respectable audience. And I think we deserve a break now for tea and coffee. Thank you so much. <laughs>